What's going on out there, folks? Welcome on in. It's another edition of Over and Back here. And yes, as you can tell, I'm leaning full into vacation mode right now. It's my last one for the year, so I'm fully diving in on it. So on a remote location again down here in the Outer Banks, Wish I was going to Texas because these games have been stellar. But we got another edition if you're looking for your one-stop shop. For all things to bet the PLL this weekend, you have found it. And we have another terrific guest joining us on the show this week. Another fellow Birds fan. I just keep doing it. Jersey girl through and through. We got Sporty Jordy on the show. Jordy, how we doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, you're on your full, like, John B. action right now. I'm living for it. <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. I'm hoping that, like, this gets some vibes going. We get some winners on the show. Uh, so, Jordy, before we get into it, um, tell people, you know, how you kind of got into betting lacrosse and, you know, what you kind of do on a day-to-day -day basis because uh, you definitely have been staying busy. Yeah, definitely. No, I got really heavy. I'm, like you said, from Jersey. I'm a Jersey girl. The year I turned 21, uh, betting was legal in Jersey. So I was kind of just like, sure, might as well get into it. Um, I was already working in sports. So once I started kind of getting the feel for it, I was like, oh my God, my mom's like, you're going to become a degenerate. And I was like, no, I'm going to make it my career. And that's exactly what I did. So that's the direction we went, started heavily um, NFL, then started leaning into NBA hockey. Not even a huge hockey fan, but for some mm -hmm. reason really good at betting hockey and then one thing led to another PLL came up and I've been really enjoying it this season I'm a big water dogs fan so I, I I'll be unbiased for the most part but yeah so no it's been a lot of fun so when Jordy tells us to take the rubber band off and bet the the water dogs this week maybe tread a little bit more lightly I'd lightly because it's coming <laughs> yeah it, it is definitely coming so there's a little precursor we'll be getting to that game a little bit later here uh gonna be a great one for sure on that one and actually that's gonna be our first game coming up right here so why don't we get into it get into the quick stick segment and start with Sunday's slate Water Dogs, one and a half point favorite. Seems a little bit light as they're going up against the Cannons because total in this one, too, 24 and a half. Just like start throwing the lines out there. But really, Jordy, you know, this one seems like teams heading in two different directions. Now, if you go back and look at the first time they met, the Cannons actually won this game and they rolled the Water Dogs. And that was when they were kind of struggling. So, you know, these are teams trending in two different directions, right? I want to say yes. I think the reason that maybe Water Dogs are only favored by that one and a half is just because of the injuries and kind of how broken they are right now. But Fair. at the end of the day, they're winning. So I don't understand why they are still not kind of getting that edge. But I don't know. Like I said, I'm a little biased. But I think that all, this all kind of changed for them back in Baltimore because that was when Water Dogs blew out chaos. And since then, the Cannons haven't even been able to get within a point and a half of anybody. So that was kind of like that turning point where they really started to go in two separate directions. But yeah, like you can argue like Cannons beat the Water Dogs by six back in week one. So maybe they're, they're Achilles heel. Who knows? But they haven't been able to do anything since. I, the injuries don't seem to be affecting the dogs yeah. that bad. They just kind of have this like energy and good vibes. Hate to bring Eagles into this, but remember our Super Bowl when we had all those injuries and we had that underdog mentality? It feels <laughs> kind of like that dreams and nightmares vibe. Like they're just cruising. So last week, everyone was against them. No one thought they'd be able to. Everyone thought it was going to be an easy win. And um, I mean, an easy win for the other team, but Water Dogs were able to get it done. So at the end of the day, I'm roll I'm 100% taking the minus one and a half. I have to. I have any, to. Any time that you work in dreams and nightmares into the handicap, you know you're going to talk me into riding with you. Like, the thing for me that maybe worries me a little bit more than the injuries is, you know, the water dogs just seem like, you know, they're riding high. You know, and I always, especially in lacrosse with the parity that these games have had, wow. how strong underdogs have gone – like it's it seems like it's really tough for PLL teams to continue rolling week after week after week. And we've even seen that this season. So like, is there any concern after like a big OT win for you? Like like any hangover for the water dogs or hey, we haven't seen it yet. Why why bet and think that it is gonna happen? I honestly think I don't think the overtime win is gonna affect them as much as maybe that week one loss. I think that might haunt them and be like, all right, well, we're on this high, but this team did roll us back in the beginning. And that, I think, could play a factor more into it. It doesn't seem like it should affect them at all. Like you said, they have been riding a little high, and we're just at that point where we're, like, creeping up. Like, 
second half of this season, like there's still a lot of time, like a lot can still happen. So I don't want them to get too confident now. I want them to just keep going out and doing what they're doing, kind of saying with like that humble swagger, like I think that's what's going to be able to get them through. But realistically on paper, last week should have been a loss for them and they were able to do it. Coming in this yeah. week with the way this season has been going the last three weeks, this should be a win. And I hate to put that out there because I don't want to jinx anything, but <laughs> on paper, this should be a good win for them. So that's what I'm hopefully looking forward to. Sport Spoken like a true sports better. Don't want to put the jinx out there. <laughs> I love that for you, Jordy. So we're looking at water dogs laying the one and a half. I mean, the thing is, I want to make a case for cannons, but as Jordy astutely put there, I mean, they've just been struggling. They haven't gotten within that goal and a half with with much frequency, you know, does it have much of the fact to do with Lyle Thompson being banged up? We don't know, but it's tough to bet on this team right now, for sure. Putting your hard money on a team that just seems like they're going in the opposite direction. So could they come back? Sure. Maybe they might re replicate what they did against the water dogs. It's hard to put your hard earned money saying that they will. So let's get into this other Sunday game before we talk these Saturday games. Cause I think last weekend showed all four games are going to be hella exciting. So it doesn't matter what gate, what order we break them down in, uh, you're going to be looking forward to all of them. So this Redwoods and Chaos game, I think, is pretty interesting because Redwoods are alive again. In this game, they're one and a half point favorites. Total is 23 and a half, but they take down what was for the better part of the season until now Archers has moved into the odds on favor to win the title. Atlas is like everybody and their grandmother's running to get future tickets in on him. And the Redwoods take him down. The Redwoods were supposed to be dead, Jordy. So like, are they back? Was it a flash in the pan? Like, like what was that all about? I don't know. I think what's been tough for the Redwoods is the fact that they've been in all of their games. Like, it's Good been point. neck and neck. They just weren't able to pull out that actual victory. And I think now that they've done that, this could potentially be the momentum shift that they needed. And also, it was against an impressive opponent, which also just, like, like it's not like they just came in and, like, beat anybody. Like, they beat someone that's been hot. And, I mean, they took advantage of them missing a key player. I get that. But I could easily see this being the momentum shift that they needed to kind of turn the second half of the season around. Well, for my plus 800 ticket that I have on the Redwoods, I hope that is exactly that would be what, awesome. <laughs> what will happen. So I, I, from, from, from your lips to the lacrosse God's ears, let's get this done. Let's have this team turn around right here. And now last thing I'll throw at you here on this one, and it's hot seat time, because like I said at the top, I like, Throwing some trends in here. I like throwing some different angles and seeing, you know, how that's going to turn out. So Redwoods, okay, they're back. Everybody thinks, oh, let's go. Let's ride. The comeback is real. However, let's not forget, it was a week ago they were two and a half point dogs. And now they win that game outright. And now the whole market perception has changed. Now they're laying points. If you look at the last two years, this Redwoods team is just three and seven when they're favorites against the spread. You look at Chaos, they're a team that loves being dogs. Eight and four against the spread is one and a half point dogs. So you hear the trends there, Jordy. I do know. the trends matter in this one? Do they continue or do they get bucked? What are you thinking? The, to me, the trends don't matter in this one. I'm taking okay. Redwoods minus one and a half. I have to, I have to. But like, it's tough because when you're looking at them, it's like, all right, you want to lean Chaos here. It makes more se logically it makes more sense but at the end of the day it's like all right they've done this in the past but we have to look at right now and right now I just don't think in this game I don't think they're the better team if they played like they did last week the Redwoods are going to win this and yeah I'm going to go as far as to take them minus one and a half I feel kind of confident about it yeah and, and, I, I and to like, this is two games in a row that I'm preaching minus I am usually I love to bet the underdog me like, too. I always bet with the points. I don't know what's happening going into this week, but. <laughs> well, well, and, you know, logic also dictated last week, lay the points with Atlas. And then the Redwoods said, no, screw that. We're going to upset them. Outright yeah. win two and a half. So I mean, same thing with Water Dogs, too. There was no Some, logic there either. <laughs> sometimes just throw the logic to the wind. And, uh, you know, everybody always says, bet with your heart, not with your head. Sometimes. You just got to bet with like what speaks to you. Like sometimes I feel like the betting gods are just like, I don't know why you like this bet, 
but you like this bet. And then you spend all week trying to hype yourself up and talk yourself into it. This bet this week that I'm going to hype myself up on might just be laying the points with the Redwoods. I think you I think you've won me over, Jordy, on that. I love it. I love to hear that. <laughs> Sorry if I'm a bad influence, but I, I think it's fun. I, I'm all in on it. So there we go. There we go. So two uh two favorites right out of the gate here in our quick stick segment. Let's get into this total talk. Get into this whip snakes and chrome game. Whip snakes one and a half point favorites. Total in this one, 23 and a half. You look at what happened when these two teams faced off back in June. It was only 22 goals scored. It's getting pretty close to that number right there. I looked at these teams' averages. Whips are averaging about 11 and a half points per game. Chrome 11.1. So that throws you right around that 22 total. Um, I don't know. Are you much of a uh, of a total better? Like I prefer doing sides unless a total really speaks to me. Like, do you have any thoughts on this total? And and how often do you really add totals in the like your your betting slate? No, I'm actually a big over on like total points over on. Okay. I love it. So for this one, it was tricky because you it's like you're right there. It's like I am gonna take the over though, but I'm sprit like I'm not going. I don't feel as confident about it as some others. This one, but I can see this easily being like a 13-12 game, which pushes you like right over. So I'm not saying like throw the house on it. I don't feel that like as confident, but I can see them each getting over that 11 point. Like I think this is going to be close. I wouldn't take, what's the spread? Whip Snakes minus one and a half. I wouldn't yeah, touch so, that. I would go yeah. minus one either way. I think this is going to be a one game. I think it's going to be close, but I do think it's going to like slightly sneak over that 23 and a half. So I'm taking over. Well, and to kind of back up the point that you're talking about, this is the first time that we've been able to be betting on goalie saves. It started last week. And if you look at Kyle Burnlore, he only had eight saves last week. His total's 11 and a half this week. He was 40%. So if this game is going to go over, you know, kind of plays into everybody's talking, you know, burn Lord, potentially MVP. He had a little bit of a slump last week. Was it just because having two weeks off or is that something that's going to become a little bit more frequent? We'll see. And if he does struggle again in cage, this number could end up getting pushed over. Scanoni, for what it's worth, he's at 11 and a half too. On the other sideline, he had 60%, but 15 saves. So he saw a lot of shots and that game was still a high scoring affair. So um, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to stay away from the total in this one, even though it's in our total talk. I think where I'm going to get in more is maybe betting on some of those goalie saves, both those 11 and a half in a game that I'm kind of with you. I think we'll see some shots. Both of those seem a little bit low to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, th this is a risky one. Like I said, I'm sprinkling the over. I'm not going fully in on it, but this whip stake season is just crazy to me because like, when you look at them in the standings, it's like, yeah, they're leading comfortably. But when you look at, like, game by game, it's not like they're coming out and dominating. They're sweats. Like, yeah, like, they're, they're – and, like, at the end of the day, a win is a win. Like, they're, do, uh, they're not taking anything. They're doing what they got to do. But it's just not, like they, – they seem intimidating, but at the end of the day, like, like you said, you're sweating every game out. So, I don't know. I think it's going to be close and, like, not high scoring, not blowing out of the water, but just sneaking over that 23 and a half. I like it. And also looking at this last game, you could potentially see, you know, a revenge factor. I don't know if in the regular season there's as much of that, but the Chrome like embarrassed them when they faced off last 16 6. So, like, do you play much into those kind of more public narratives? I guess I'll say where, you know, oh, well, this team lost the last time. So now they're going to be pissed off and now they're going to, you know, stamp it on them. Like, I think maybe that's more playoff driven. Um, do you ever like add that kind of stuff into your handicap and at all? Like the revenge factor, the their do factor. Sometimes this one, I don't think really agreed plays a factor at all. I think more it's like focusing on where they're at this season, especially like if it was like this, if this happened like a couple weeks ago, that's one thing because then it's like, all right, we're on the same playing field. Like this was pretty recent, but for how long ago it was, I don't think it's going to play as much of a factor. I think right now the Chrome just has to focus on playing better than they did last week. Like they, they like throw out, past stats like focus on like all right we did this last week let's be better in this upcoming week and that's what they're going to need to do to pull out a win that's that's a fair look there so well since i'm kind of like punking out here and in total talk i don't really love either side you know i don't think the over is a bad look but i think this is just a good number by the odds makers at 23 and a half i did just want to ask you i guess maybe you know a, a just kind of betting theory question because 
what the books are doing this week for these player props, I think, is really interesting. They have, like, a spectrum of, of ways that you're allowed to bet over players. So they have players like Brandon Nickturn or Matt Rambo or multiple other players across different books who have, you can bet them over one and a half goals and, you know, heavy juice on that, two and a half goals, three and a half goals. And the higher you're going to bet that up, the more your plus money payback is. Like, you were saying you love dogs, so you, like me, love those plus money bets, those extra money opportunities. Oh, yeah. Um, do you think like there's any value if you were to like lay a minus 190 on some of these players over one and a half or um, would you probably just maybe hope for a bigger day and take some of that bigger plus money at like a plus 185 um, if you were going over two and a half or if you go over three and a half for Nick turn it's like plus 475 or something like that like is it worth the risk for you or would you rather just lay the juice and take something that's a little more sure like how do you bet that? No, I'm definitely, I'm the, have, like, I'd rather throw a little bit of money for better odds. Like, Agreed. that's how, like I said, I'm usually an underdog better. Like, that, I, I'm a big parlay person. Like, that's how I like to focus. So, going to something like this, I would do plus weight 185 for Nectarn for two and a half. Especially because that's, like, right in between where he's been the last two games. Good point. So, it's kind of, like, that's my, this is how I, like, talk myself into this. I'm like, all right. This will be the week where, like, this week he did this, last week he did this, so let's go right in the middle. And, like, he needs to have a good game. They need to have a good game. So I don't think it's as risky. I'm not going to go for the full three and a half, but, yeah, I feel comfortable at two and a half plus 185. I love it. Man, you're just dropping bombs and dropping <laughs> plays, Jordy. I love that out of you. So all kinds of actionable info getting thrown your way on this edition. Want to let you know you can always follow Jordy at at the Sporty Jordy on Twitter. She's a content analyst with Mojo, and you can also check her content out on YouTube. Does a great job over there as well. Just sport, just search Sporty Jordy. So let's get into our last segment here. It's Angle of the Week time, Jordy. This is the game. Archers and Atlas. I mean, hell of a good slate this week. The, the people down in Dallas... They're going to be getting a treat, hopefully, maybe some birds transplants down there. But even you Cowboys fans going out there, I hope you have a fun time watching some lax. Archers, one and a half point favorites. Total in this one, high, 25 and a half. Um, it's kind of surprising. I think that maybe has a lot to do with just what the Archers are doing right now because when these two played earlier this season, it was low scoring relative to this total, 10 to 9, a, a tight one. Do you expect another one of those, or are there going to be some fireworks in Dallas? No, I I think it's going to be close, but I don't think it's going to be low scoring. Like, I'm okay. hammering over It's shootout time? Yeah. It's shootout time at 25 ready, and, like, and a half? Also, like, ever since Grant came back, too, like, you kind of see, like, even, he's not, like, 100% yet, but, like, you still, like, feel the vibes, and I think that on both yep. sides is going to be like, okay, now we all have to step up, and, I mean... I don't know. Life's too short to bet the under. I'm, I'm going over 25 and a half. Well, and there's also like this betting axiom that people fall into. The lowest total of the week, the odds makers must know something, bet the under. The highest total of the week, odds makers must know something, bet the over. So, um, you know, it didn't work out last week. Actually, one of my best bets was going over that 22 and a half that was the lowest total, but... I'm kind of with you. Like, you just look at how these teams are. You look at the fact that Atlas is going to be ultra pissed off after losing a game to, you know, the, I hate to put it in air quotes, like the lowly Redwoods, but that's what they bet this year. So if there ever was going to be like a bounce back opportunity for Atlas, I think it could be this week. So let, let's get into the side then a little bit. So if we're looking towards that over 25 and a half. Um, how about the fact that this is the first time and this shows the respect the market has for Atlas. They're now the odds-on favorites, as I was saying earlier, to win the title. Um, it's also the first time we're seeing Atlas as underdogs this year. So I dug into the numbers just to look like how did they do as underdogs. We had no data on it this year. They're 3-1 and one last year against the spread as underdogs. If you look at the Archers in the last two years, only 4-5 and five against the spread as one-and-a-half point favorites. So... This is a team that was historically good as underdogs. We have the Archers who terrific haven't been terrific as favorites. Um, you know, anything in it there for you? Or how are you looking on this side? Because I think this is a tough one to, to, to lay a goal and a half in for, my, oh, for me. It, this, betting this game is brutal, especially because when you look at, like, overall rankings, too, like, they're neck and neck. Yeah. It, it's just, it's a lot. It's a coin toss. It's a coin toss. I Especially, you know, 
I'm actually switching where I was because I'm not taking all favorites this weekend. I literally, I was going to take Of a Parker. principle. Of a I, principle. You're I, like, I'm not yeah, laying I'm numbers all damn show. Better. Yeah, I am not taking all favorites. That is against what I stand for. So you know what? Screw it. I'll take Atlas. I'll, so, I'm I'm debating taking Moneyline. <laughs> and what, so what, what is the take back that we have on the book you're looking at right now? What are we looking at for the take back on so Atlas? So let's Moneyline? see. Well, on... Let, what I'm looking at right now, Archer's minus one and a half plus 120, Atlas plus one and a half minus 150, Atlas money line at minus 105 is kind of hot. That's not terrible. That's it's not, not awful at all. It's I not think all, I might do it. <laughs> here, here's the thing, because the, people are probably going to be getting this episode on Thursday, but whenever you're watching it, we appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate you watching it, even if it's right up to game time. Doesn't this seem like one where... People are going to be looking, oh, it's bounce back time for Atlas. So I think as soon as you see this, if you do like Atlas, you get it now. Because yeah. it's a lot more likely that you're going to be laying a little bit more juice or you're not going to have as much of a big take back on Atlas. Because if people are betting this game, I think a lot of them are going to think how we are on this. You know, like Atlas was the favorite. They dropped off. You know, they're going to be motivated. So I... I don't know if I'm going to bet it, but I think if you do like it, you know, I would bet it now. Would you agree with that? Oh, definitely. Especially once people start putting their opinions in, it, the lines are going to shift. Right now, it's like pretty even and like yeah. the lines make sense and you're like, okay, I feel comfortable. You don't want get one to now. get too obscure in the other direction. So definitely bet this one as early as you can because I think it's going to get super chaotic. There we go. Get to your app and get it in now. But finish the rest of the show like 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 you can pause us right now get your bet in come back and hear the end because we're just going to get into one more thing before we get you out of here goalie saves Gittleman 10 and a half can cannon 11 and a half low total for both of those so that's what kind of worries me like this is a super high total game but the goalies have low totals so I think maybe that means the shooters are going to be looking out there but that just kind of seems like the odds makers are talking out of two sides of their mouths because you would think with a higher total game, that means more shots. It means more opportunities for saves. That just seems a little weird to me to see a 10 and a half and an 11 and a half on goalie saves in a game that is likely going to play towards an over. Like, yeah. does that smell fishy at all to you? It does. It's kind of making me question my hammering over 25 and a half. We've already done it. We can't go back and undo it now. I'm not going to take it back. So, <laughs> but no, when you look at it, it is sketchy because that you can't just be like, oh my God, yeah, I'm going to hammer 25 and over 25 and a half. And then I'm going to have over on both goalies that you're like, it doesn't just work out that way. So I think... They're trying to get you with the over because you can be like, all right, I'll take under 25 and a half, but I'll go over on goalies and kind Good of point. Meet in the middle that way. Um, I I don't know what I'm going to do in terms of goalies this week because I, I genuinely think it's going to be pretty explosive, but it does feel like a trap. So it makes me a little nervous. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm with you. All right, I'm not going to talk myself in anymore. I've already have hammered way more stuff than I was planning on. As usual, over and back starts, and I'm just filling up the bet slip as the show is going on. Well, Jordy, I hope you had fun with us. We would love to have you back. You absolutely crushed it. Remind people where they can find you and where they can follow you. No, thank you so much for having me on. This was awesome. But yeah, you can follow me. My handle everywhere, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter is at the Sporty Jordy. And YouTube is Sporty Jordy too. So all over. Perfect. Easy way to find her. And let's go, birds. Let's do it this year. Appreciate you coming on, Jordy. And that's going to do it for us. That is the end that we have for you. So if you enjoyed the show, all you got to do, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, hop in the comments below, see what you agree with, what you disagree with. We would love to hear from you. And also drop us a follow on Twitter at PLLBet. So huge thanks to my guest, the Sporty Jordy. I'm Dan Alexander, and we'll talk to you next week on Over and Back.